afternoon. My name is Thomas McGeeva and I'm a Head of Education at Southern City College. Uh, we're the largest training provider within Birmingham and West Midlands and we deliver across eight campuses uh, around Birmingham. Today, thank you very much to Tap Beer TV for allowing me to, to host this show on how we can engage young people back into education and sports education in particular as a real key to engaging with them and, and coming away from antisocial behaviour. Uh, today I'm joined with Mohamed Zafran BEM uh, and Dan Potter who's our local security expert. Uh, firstly, Zafran, uh, just tell us a little bit about yourself and how you came to work within the sports community environment. Uh, first of all, uh, thank you for you Tom, taking time out to come here. And uh, thank you to Takbir TV for giving us this uh, opportunity. Uh, my journey as a whole, uh, being born and bred in uh, Birmingham, a local lad, uh, setting out on my journey, as well publicised uh, with my brother-in-law's uh, murder mm -hmm. a few years ago. I uh, went out in the streets, locating gangs and getting them back into education and uh, sport via some specialised people in that uh, occupation, such as yourself, who's spearleaded most of the programmes over the last few years. And uh, remarkably, at the time, I think we all, our commitment was if you could change one or two lives, that would have been excellent for us. Mm. But uh, to exceed the numbers of 21,000 people signing up for World for Youth and Community via Southern City College, it's been uh, exceptional and something uh, we didn't expect, to be honest. Looking at young people, especially locally within Small Heath, Border Green, Ward End, Handsworth, all of the local areas that, that we serve, uh, what do you think is one of the main factors as to why antisocial behaviour is still on the rise? I think there's various issues. Uh, again, we highlight it quite a lot. We get a lot of complaints in the local area. Every time you try to do something positive, people will still throw it back at your face and say, oh, there's not enough being done. Although someone might be doing it as a, on a voluntary basis, and then they look up to role models and uh, they say, you know what, we're counting everything upon you. But parenting is a big, big, big thing. Mm -hmm. But it's not just a word. We need to monitor that, we need to make sure that we fulfil our duties. So uh, everyone needs to be a role model, especially the youngsters, as you know, they come into our academy. They'll be sent out to us for six to seven hours in a day. Mm -hmm. How many parents actually turn up for them sessions? They'll be left alone with us. So during that six to eight months while they're with us, again, everything for them is us, the community leaders, mm -hmm. and that's, that's why they look up to us. But if parents actually take some more time out, actually be with them, attend, and it shouldn't be just Monday nine to five job for them, but these extra duties in the long run it pays uh, dividends as it brings a trust and also that well being. But we got issues. Uh, we're not going to turn away from that regarding drugs, crime, unemployment, you know that kind mm. of stuff. That's always going to be on the rise. But as a community, as individuals, we need to get together and tackle this uh, program. Okay. So as much as community programs have yeah. their value and sports being the hook to engage young people. Uh, having parents involved, is yeah. that something you try and advocate from day one or is it something you try and bring in as the programme develops and the young person develops along with the programme? I think from day one that's been uh, our main, uh, main aim, to be honest. Uh, as a personal note, my kids be on the programmes every time, as an example. Mm -hmm. Although my son hasn't been uh, well recently, but he's, st he's still there. Even in this condition, he, he doesn't miss out. My daughter's been as much as she can as well. She, she be there. We promote all young girls to come in. You come in, you see yourself on a Saturday. We've got so many young girls who actually enjoy yeah. coming in the hall, running around freely. Sometimes parents come. A lot of times parents will send the kids, but they don't actually make time, which again is a disappointment. But uh, for these kind of uh, programs, we, like I said, we, we need to do it together. And uh, kids need to understand in their mind that our mm. parents are happy for us to do these activities. Yeah. And they're on our side, rather than just for them, just to have a social time. Is there still a stigma attached to sports as a topic of education and as a as an employment route uh, within the local community? Unfortunately, it is. It's been there for a long time, and the easy way out for people. I'm not stereotyping everyone, but if they're not making a career out of it, they'll put a, a race card or something that against it. But the opportunities are there for everyone, as but. Like I said, it's a two-way thing. Parents need to show their commitment mm. that if kids are actually exceptional in that sport, in that trade, then they need to fulfil that. You know, that time, that effort, go to the sessions, go to that football trip, 
even in the cold weather, go when the kids mm. are training. And the, the, as you know yourself, come from sports background, that's the hardest thing. But uh, like I said, uh, we get loads of kids coming in. We get so many agents, you know, in our yeah. academy yourself. But uh, again, if they're not up to it regarding fitness or any other issue, mm -hmm. they're going to blame me on certain other things. Yeah. That we won't get selected. Uh, we won't get anyone coming in for a trial. Mm -hmm. But like I said, the opportunities are there. Working-wise, we've sent so many regarding stewarding, yeah. spears, international, you know, yeah. and who are absolutely exceptional in that kind of sense. But uh, like I said, we, we can't stereotype anyone, but we need to do it as a, together rather than blame people. Uh, I'd like to take this opportunity now to introduce uh, Dan Potter. Dan Potter is a, from a local security company and he's a security expert. Uh, Dan, from your perspective as an employer, which is a totally different viewpoint than, than Zafran, uh, how do you see the impact of, of sports education, in particular kind of stewarding qualifications, security qualifications, how can they lead to employment with yourself as an employer? Tom, thanks for introducing us. Um, first off, I'd like to thank Takbeer TV for giving me the opportunity to come on and discuss it from an employer's point of view. Um, definitely, um, there are a lot of opportunities and a lot of jobs that are out there for people, in particular the stewarding at spectator events. Um, Spears Worldwide Security for example operate quite a lot within the Birmingham area and a lot of job opportunities there for individuals over the age of 18 that would like to pursue a career in that area. Also running alongside that there will be qualifications that you can gain that will help you become employed. For example it's a stipulation now that you must have or be working towards a level two qualification in stewarding at spectator events before you can start working with the public at any number of venues that there may be. So it's, it's imperative and as you know, as that's rightly mentioned, there are lots of opportunities there for young people. It's just about getting across how to get to these opportunities and what they need to do to be able to gain these qualifications and experience. Okay, so if I was a local 18 to 24 year old uh, thinking about coming into the sports industry as a steward, yeah. what steps would I have to take to go from this moment now to becoming employed with yourself through Spears Worldwide uh, as, as a steward? I think the first two things that need to happen come from the individual. A, they need to want to be employed and they need to want to do it for themselves and two, they have to make that first move my role and my being here today is to explain where these opportunities are, where they are and how to go about achieving them. Um, for an 18 year old lad or, or female for example, we do have a lot of females within the stewarding industry. They need to look at contacting somebody like Spears Worldwide Security, somebody like the Skills Network, all of which if they contact the show I will leave the details for them to be able to get in contact. Once they've contacted them, an interview will be arranged so they can talk to this person, gauge what they want to do, where they want to go, what avenues they want to pursue. Once that's happened, they will then get enrolled onto the qualification. Once they've enrolled on the qualification and they're working towards it, then they can start working for, for companies like Spears Worldwide Security and other companies within the Birmingham area. They will then have 12 to 16 weeks to complete that qualification, right. generally done through a college or through the, through the FE sector or training providers that will do it on an e-learning basis. Okay, so anyone 16 to 18 mm. uh, that's hoping to go into the stewarding industry, uh, the FE sector is the main funding agency so South and City College uh, would deliver these courses for you on application. Again, please leave your details here uh, at Tatbeer TV and we'll be in contact with you after the show. Uh, but if someone is 19 plus, uh, what if they are, he or she is unemployed? Uh, what if he or she is signing on? Do they still have to pay fees for their courses or is there additional support available? No, we, we try and support anybody from 19 plus as much as possible. It's a fully funded course, so they wouldn't have to spend a penny on it to get the qualification. It's not just the stewarding and spectator safety course we do, there are lots of other courses as well, but with the stewarding in particular, as I say, it's fully funded. Once they're enrolled on the course, it's like they would be at a college 
accept it's e-learning based so it's completely online. They would then get assigned a tutor. That tutor would then offer them support and guidance, mm -hmm. mark their work and offer them any feedback that they, they need. Pretty much like it would be if they were doing a college based course and they were attending. The reason we do e-learning based is because it's more accessible. People can do it in their own time, at their own pace, as long as you've got access to a computer, a smartphone, mm -hmm. a tablet, you can log on and you can do it, as I say, at your own pace. And it's a lot more accessible than having to go to a college perhaps or one day a week at a venue to actually do the course. And I've put in excess of 350 people so far through the course and we've had some really good feedback from it. Um, even from the extent our customers have saw the difference from when people haven't been on the course to when they've enrolled on the course and their level of quality and level of service delivery has improved dramatically as well. Fantastic. So some people who are currently working that would like to, to maybe look at uh, expanding their employment opportunities or to retrain, they could do this course online in their own time and then move into employment once the course is completed. Definitely. Um, it's key for me. There are a lot of training providers out there who will give you the training but then leave you to your own devices. What we're trying to do is identify the training that you need but not leave it there give you the steps that you need to then get into employment so the employability skills the CV building the mock interviews so when you go for interviews you know what to expect mm -hmm. and you'll be in a good position then to be able to get employment because the end goal for this is to get people who have left college unemployed even more so with the long term unemployed because the longer you're unemployed the more difficult it becomes then to motivate yourself to be able to retrain, gain further employment. So there are definitely opportunities there. We try and do it slightly differently where we see you from start all the way through to you being employed. And the stewarding industry uh, and spectator safety, uh, is it quite a fair split between male and female employees? Definitely Tom. I think yourself and everybody else will be quite surprised how many females are actually in that industry. Mm -hmm. um, we govern by the, the SIA for the security side of things mm -hmm. and they've had a big push on increasing the amount of females within the industry. There's definitely a need there for more females and it's on the rise and personally I'll be pushing that as, as much as possible to encourage females to come along, have a chat with us, see if it's for you. If it is for you we can then answer any questions you may have and look at perhaps getting you signed up and getting you employed and earning some money. Fantastic. Coming back to Zaf, uh, in terms of your role within developing the community, providing more opportunities for young people, uh, what have you got moving forward that, that would help re-engage, especially young people locally uh, who have either had poor, uh, poor experiences of education, poor experiences of unfortunate support services, uh, whether it be with a council, whether it be with private support or, or just uh, a home life that isn't supportive to them wanting to achieve. See, with all for youth and uh, community, Tom, it's been a programme which is going on for the last uh, six to seven years now. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know for yourself, he, it's just expanding all the time. With over 150 new additions every week, the amount of calls we take, uh, the amount of people who are pushing us on for different programmes, uh, Again, getting more young girls involved in some of the programs, there was a big need, mm. and that's pushing on as well now. Uh, regards to other issues, working closely with the police, some of the programs they put on, uh, working with the council, who have been a massive support over the last year or so, yeah. with the the active parks program, and that's something we've set up. Uh, I think it's a 15 to 16 parks. We worked probably more, and uh, again, people from all different backgrounds, different community. Some people thought they would never get a chance, to be honest, even to coach some of our sessions. For them, it was a big honour. Yeah. And we showed them that trust. And we also did promise them that once you're finished with us, there will be a different way, the way people are going to react to you in the community, mm -hmm. where someone had a fear factor or thinking that these kind of people are going to come in and they're going to cause riots. Now, we did promise them that once you're finished with us, they're going to look at you as good role models and they're going to actually invite you to their programmes and uh, we've already said that regardless of what we do, 
what company we are, we will help anyone. Mm -hmm. Any cause, anyone doing good work, we support them. Uh, there's good work going on in the board and the community college as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, they put on courses all the time. There's people going there, they're signing up. Uh, like I said, with the Spears, the international, uh, the amazing work they put on, Southern City College, uh, regarding what they do. And we've already said that they don't have to choose these people, they don't have to choose these organizations. For our, from our end, there's never been any pressure that they have to join us. But uh, again, we can only give references to someone who we know does a good job. In terms of the greater community in Birmingham, yeah. uh, do you think we have an issue with who they see as role models? I think there is. Obviously, from a young age, coming, growing up in Birmingham, all of us had that peer pressure as well that you have to look up to the councillors, you have to look up to the MPs, they make the decisions. Mm. Once you get into this field, especially when you start sitting in with them, mm. then you realise that uh, there's actually everyone support to exactly what decisions they make, what they promised mm -hmm. to deliver, do they actually fulfil that role? Uh, then again, if it's a big issue, do they actually support the ones who are at grassroots level? Mm. And uh, again, there, there's many issues. There's, we've highlighted this several times. There's so many uh, things going on in Birmingham at the moment. Uh, we're proud of Brummies in the day. Mm -hmm. uh, for myself, it was a big honour when I was named as the first pride of Birmingham in the city. And uh, after that, there's so with tags, with titles, becomes a uh, huge uh, roles and responsibilities. That's, that's something, again, you're always in the public eye as a public figure. Mm -hmm. And uh, people always expect you to make that decision or be at the forefront. But like I said, there's people who actually get paid for this role. They're in power. We need them to actually make that voice. If someone's going to say something and that's going to be tweeted for 20,000 followers or social media, Instagram, everywhere, then that message should be positive. But they need to come out in public and tell people that we're actually doing this, not others to make that decision and these guys standing mile away and then just join in for a photo shoot opportunity. Yeah, there are some there are some massively influential uh, local people who don't look for limelight. Yeah. Uh, people like Mark Brown from Birmingham City Council's Wellbeing Service, yeah. who funds programmes. Uh, the principal of South and City College, uh, Michael Hopkins, uh, provides free facilities uh, to local community groups when the facilities aren't being used by the college. There are lots of opportunities out there, but unfortunately we need to know who the gatekeepers are. Yeah to be able to get them opportunities out to the community. Yeah. It seems that only the people within them certain meetings and industries hold yeah. the key to them doors to be unlocked. Uh, if it's uh, looking at sports programmes, if we're looking for educational courses, if we're looking for use of facilities, uh, and you're based uh, in and around uh, a campus for South and City College, then please do get in contact after that, and that's something we can look at. Uh, we are keen as a, as a college to support the local community. Uh, in any way that we can, whether it be through room usage, whether it be through sports facilities, uh, anything that we can do, uh, the college has a mandate to support the community that we serve. Dan, bringing it back to yourself, with young people moving into stewarding, is, is stewarding the end goal or is there more progression in the career and industry once you've gone into stewarding? Definitely not. I think the actually getting into stewarding is, is the starting point. Once you've started working for companies that operate the stewarding, then they will look at you and think, can we make them into a supervisor? Have they got the right attributes? And then they will start to put a career path in place for you if that's what you want. There's nothing wrong with being a steward and just doing a steward's job. But if you did want to progress, then, then definitely. For me in particular, I would be looking to identify stewards that have got the potential to move on, become supervisors, become team leaders, and then look at giving them the qualifications in order for them to do that. So rather than stopping at the level two, we can look at the level three, the level four, ILM in leadership and management. Mm -hmm. There are lots of different opportunities there. The key is really is making that first step towards the end goal. Fab. Is there any fast track schemes for, for young Asian females in particular? Uh, in terms of being underrepresented within management levels? A um, bit of a tricky one, Tom. I, I think if they've got the right attributes, then, then definitely. And they've also got to want to do it. Mm. And if we identify that early on, then, yeah, why not? Why not give them the opportunity? Why not look to, to fast-track it on? 
Um, and we'd do that with, with anybody that yeah. showed the right level of commitment and the right level of attributes. Um, and that is part of what my job is, looking to identify that and, and move people on within the business. Um, we have to grow as a business and we like to use people that work for us to grow that business, i.e. promoting from, from within. We believe that gives a good impression to our staff and it gives them that little bit of drive and determination to want to do well. So, so yeah, definitely there's always opportunities there to fast track people through, to move people through a little bit quicker. Um, but again, it all comes down to what they want and, and, and where they want to go with it. Of course. If we were looking at the standard day, I know you have contracts with Aston Villa Football Club, I know you have contracts with uh, Warsaw uh, mm. and other local clubs. Uh, what would a standard shift be for, for a home match for a steward? I mean, generally, it starts at the, the introductory stage. So we would invite you along for the interview at the venue you're more likely to be working at. Oh. You would have an introduction into the company, you know, mm. what our values are, where we started as a company, where we want to be. You would then fill out your application forms. Once that's completed, we would then take you on a tour of the stadium. So you've got an understanding of where you need to come on match days, what you need to wear uniform-wise, who you need to report to, and the roles and responsibilities within that stadium or venue that you're likely to be undertaking. When they then come on a match day to work, they will know everything they need to know, who to report to, what to wear, and what they need to do. I always say, and I'm a big believer, you will get most of your knowledge from actually doing the job itself. Mm -hmm. So yes, we can give you the qualifications, yes, we can give you the opportunity for employment, but when you actually start doing that role, that is when you'll start to learn what that role is. Uh, Zafran, in terms of yourself, with work experience opportunities, with, with placements for young people, uh, all 16 to 18s have to do a work placement as part of the national framework. Uh, what opportunities are there with yourself for that to take place? Uh, Again, my role as a, as a community worker itself, we get roles of referrals. We get a lot of youngsters coming in. So a lot of times we'll put them in a, a sport academy. Uh, regarding to education, again, there's various uh, tools where Southern City College, again, from day one, mm -hmm. has been uh, the, the spearhead with, uh, with everything, with the, our principal opening the doors for everyone, regarding whatever mm -hmm. issues we had. We, as you know, we used to go to youth centres at that time, uh, trying to get either free facilities or uh, regarding even uh, knocking doors with other educational sectors, but uh, no one was willing to give us a helping hand. But uh, like I said, Mike, Mike did with the Southern City College. And uh, we've had uh, 16 to 18 numbers regarding, I think it's one of them age group where everyone tries to tap into, whether it's the need group, whether it's whichever one. But we've been fortunate because of the trust factor. They always come in, and uh, I think with our public services department, mm -hmm. our sports uh, studies, I think uh, by far we provide the best. Uh, I think regarding training facilities and uh, expertise with with yourself as the spirit. Thank you. Uh, in the second part of the show, we're looking to take any questions from uh, from viewers. Uh, please call up to the show. Uh, your questions will be aired live, and we'll answer them at that moment on the spot. Uh, thank you very much. We'll see you shortly after this advert. <laughs>